on World News Tonight. Papal visit. Pope Francis visits Northern America. Tonight, find out why he apologizes to the people in Canada. Relentless heat wave. Coast to coast heat turns deadly and destructive in California as high temperatures fuel forest fires. Health emergency. Countries trying to gear up for the new infectious monkeypox virus as cases mount globally. And let's go Barbie. Excitement spills as the world of Barbie opens doors to all ages. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and thank you for joining with us on World News Tonight. Now, thousands of indigenous persons are expected to converge on the small Alberta Prairie community to hear a long-awaited apology from Pope Francis for generations of abuse and cultural suppression at Catholic resi residential schools across Canada. Pope Francis told reporters aboard the papal plane that his visit to Canada will be one of penance. Siamo attenti in questo viaggio perché, come ha detto, è un viaggio penitenziale. The Pope is set to make an apology on Canadian soil and on behalf of the Roman Catholic Church for the abuse that Indigenous children endured at mostly church-run residential schools. He landed in Edmonton, Alberta on Sunday, greeted by Governor General Mary Simon, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Indigenous leaders ahead of his week-long visit. After a short performance, the Pope met and exchanged gifts with several Indigenous leaders. More than 150,000 Indigenous children were taken to residential schools between 1881 and 1996. Separated from their families, many children were physically and sexually abused while forced to abandon their language and traditions. While Canada's leaders have known about high numbers of children dying at the school since 1907, the issue was thrust to the forefront with the discovery of suspected unmarked graves at or near former residential school sites last year. The Pope is scheduled to visit a former residential school this week and meet with Indigenous people, including survivors. But many survivors and Indigenous leaders say they are hoping for more than an apology, such as justice, financial compensation and artifact recovery. With Russia's war against Ukraine entering its sixth month, the United Nations have estimated that at least 5,000 civilians have been killed. With no end to sight, Moscow continues to expand its military objectives in Ukraine. Attacks on key Ukrainian infrastructure continued on the 105th day of Russia's war against its neighbor. Moscow's missiles hit Ukraine's Black Sea port of Odessa on Saturday, just hours after the two countries signed agreements to allow grain exports to resume. Russian attacks continue across the country, with Moscow announcing earlier last week that its military objectives in Ukraine would now go beyond the eastern Donbas region, marking the clearest acknowledgement that the country has expanded its war goals. The UN estimates that some 5,000 civilians have lost their lives in Ukraine during the five months since the onset of Russia's invasion. While the actual casualty figure could be even higher than that, Ukraine's health ministry says at least 18 medical personnel had been killed and nearly 900 medical facilities had been damaged or destroyed so far. With the war entering its sixth month on Sunday, Ukrainian president vowed that his country would do all it can to fight against Russia. So we don't let up. As in every day during the last five months, we do everything to inflict the highest possible damage on the enemy and to gather for Ukraine as much support as possible. Against his backdrop, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov dismissed claims that Moscow was the cause of the global food crisis. Visiting Egypt, he stressed that it was Western nations who were distorting the truth about the impact of sanctions on global food security. He further elaborated that the West, including the U.S., Britain, and Germany, as well as many EU and NATO member states, was prolonging the conflict. Lavrov added that while Moscow stands ready to resume negotiations with Ukraine on a number of issues, Ukraine and the West have not agreed to return to the negotiating table. 
A fierce California wildfire expanded early, burning several thousand acres and forcing evacuations as tens of millions of Americans sweltered through scorching heat with already record second temperatures to climb even further. Overnight, another wave of destruction. The Oak Fire more than doubling in size to 14,000 acres. Now the state's largest wildfire of the year, ravaging everything in its path. The fire has gained exceptional acreage overnight. Peak fire season hitting hard in the rural community of Mariposa. Over 6,000 forced to evacuate as Governor Gavin Newsom declares a state of emergency. With containment nowhere in sight, the billowing plumes of smoke are visible from outer space. These are the new sounds of summer. The crackling of bone dry brush, the result of California's mega drought promising more hellscapes ahead as temperatures keep rising. More than 2,000 firefighters working around the clock to beat back flames, but thousands of structures remain under threat. Crews spread too thin to stop all the homes from burning. Oh, this is horrible. Rodney McGuire captured this video as he lost it all. His family's home for generations gone, along with his collection of classic cars. All he has left is support from his neighbors. I still haven't absorbed this. I got another 50 messages and I've been just trying to get my strength back to even read them. I just don't know. Tonight, another small community overmatched by towering infernos, just hoping for a break from forces out of their control. The migrants who hail from several Asian, African and Middle Eastern nations landed at ports in Sicily. Ships in the Mediterranean Sea rescue stranded migrants trying to reach Europe. More than a thousand migrants arrived in Italy within the space of a few hours. Over 600 people trying to cross the Mediterranean on a fishing boat were rescued on Saturday by coast guards off the coast of Calabria. Whilst hundreds more were recovered and brought to the island of Lampedusa, from boats departing from North Africa. They were later taken to Sicily, where several bodies were recovered. The Mediterranean is becoming the biggest symmetry of the desperate. Reports in the Italian media say Lampedusa's immigration centre has been overwhelmed by a huge increase in landings in recent weeks. The ANSA news agency reports that the centre is operating well over its capacity the Mediterranean is one of the most dangerous routes for clandestine migration. The arrivals come ahead of a fiercely contested Italian election, with polls suggesting the far right could make gains. Those saved included migrants from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Sudan, Ethiopia and Somalia. British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss urged Paris to act to ease unacceptable delays at the English Channel port Dover, where officials blame French border force understaffing for ruining summer getaways with hours-long queues. Snaking along the motorway, thousands of cars at a standstill. Holidaymakers and truck drivers heading to the port of Dover faced more lengthy delays. It comes after some people waited in their cars for six hours on Friday, marking a chaotic start to British school holidays. Horrific. We were supposed to be on the 9.15 and it's midday now. <laughs> Just a nightmare. We are travelling with three kids. We are already fed up. And this looks like a third world situation completely. We are supposed to take the train at 6pm, uh, but I'm sure it will be... I don't know. We're probably going to slip in the car tonight. British port authorities said they had been preparing for the summer holidays for months and had installed new infrastructure. They said they were, quote, sorely let down by French immigration, pointing to a lack of customs officials. However, the situation is expected to improve over the weekend. Starting from the very early hours of this morning, we did have a full complement of French immigration officers turn up and man all the booths. And that's made all the difference in the world. French authorities denied having staffing issues, instead blaming a technical problem for the delays. They've also pointed out that more checks are needed since the UK left the European Union. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News.
Welcome back to World News Tonight and now we move on to the new infectious outbreak of monkeypox. All of us still have questions about how monkeypox is transmitted and who's most at risk. So investigations are still underway with USA now preparing them for the next health emergency. Monkeypox is on the move with at least 16,000 cases and spreading across roughly 75 countries. The outbreak triggering a global health emergency by the World Health Organization. Here are some other questions you may have about monkeypox. First, how do you get it? Mostly through prolonged contact with fluid coming off the monkeypox rash, whether it's skin to skin or by touching a household item that's been contaminated by the infectious fluid, like bed sheets, towels, and shared clothing. You can also get it by kissing someone who's infected or from exposure to their sneezes or coughs. How do you test for it? Healthcare workers take a viral swab of the rash with results ready in three to five days. What should you do if you've been exposed? See if you qualify for a vaccine. Monitor for symptoms like fever, body aches, and a rash. If you do test positive for monkeypox, you should self-isolate and avoid contact with others until the rash fully heals. Most cases are mild and people recover without treatment in roughly two to four weeks. In New York City today, the health department scrambling to distribute vaccines. Tonight, the demand for additional doses on the rise as the outbreak worsens. With monkeypox declared a public health emergency of international concern by the WHO over the weekend, health authorities in South Korea as well will be discussing national countermeasures in the coming days. South Korea's government is aiming to tame monkeypox concerns. And the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency are set to discuss monkeypox prevention measures this week, following a decision by the WHO to declare the disease a public health emergency of international concern, the highest level of alert the organization can issue. The country's health authorities said on Sunday that the meeting will be more focused on reassessing current monkeypox countermeasures rather than unveiling new rules. The exact date of the meeting has not been confirmed. In June, South Korean health authorities designated monkeypox a Tier 2 infectious disease, meaning that it requires anyone infected to be reported and placed in quarantine. There are 22 diseases in total in this category, including COVID-19. After the first infection was confirmed in the country on June 22nd, health officials issued a caution level alert and organized a 24-hour emergency monitoring system for monkeypox while encouraging local authorities to install a task force if and when infections are found in their area. The government also rolled out a second-generation vaccination program for medical staff at the National Medical Center and designated 27 countries as quarantine inspection required areas. The first confirmed case of monkeypox in the country was a Korean traveler from Germany who underwent isolation treatment at Incheon Medical Center for 15 days. The person was released from quarantine earlier this month, while no other infections have been confirmed in the country. Meanwhile, 504 doses of the monkeypox treatment were distributed to 17 major hospitals across the nation on July 8th. The authorities are also working on an agreement to secure third-generation monkeypox vaccines for 5,000 people. Brazil's Jair Bolsonaro officially launched his presidential re-election campaign, attacking the voting system, the judiciary and his main challenger in the Bellico speech in Rio de Janeiro. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro has officially launched his re-election campaign. Thousands of the far-right leaders' supporters gathered at a stadium in Rio de Janeiro where he was nominated. Pitching the election as a fight between good and evil, Bolsonaro attacked his main challenger. Nós somos a maioria. Nós somos do bem. We are the majority. We are the good ones. And we are willing to fight for our freedom and our homeland. We have to attract the young leftists to our side show them the truth and show them what they have to lose with their candidate. Bolsonaro continues to warn against what he calls flaws in the electoral system. Such attacks in recent months have led analysts to fear that the man dubbed the tropical Trump may refuse to accept defeat like his former American counterpart. His main opponent, former president Luis Inácio Lula da Silva, was officially nominated by his left-wing workers' party last week. 
Analysts say the race between left and right for the presidency is Brazil's most polarized election in decades. Israeli security forces killed two Palestinian gunmen in an hours-long shootout in the West Bank. The gun battle erupted when the Israelis launched a raid to arrest a wanted suspect. Thousands of Palestinians attended a funeral procession on Sunday for two gunmen killed earlier in the day by Israeli security forces in the occupied West Bank. The fighters, claimed as members by the Fatah al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, died in a pre-dawn clash at a house in Nablus. The Palestinian Health Ministry said six others were wounded. Police said Israeli security forces on an apparent arrest raid of a wanted suspect came under fire. They, quote, responded with live fire and other means until neutralizing the terrorists inside the house and on its roof. Writing on Twitter, Hussein al-Sheikh, a senior Palestinian official, condemned what he described as a crime committed by occupation forces. Israeli forces have stepped up raids in the West Bank in recent months, after men from the area carried out deadly street attacks in Israel. US brokered peace talks aimed at establishing a Palestinian state in East Jerusalem, the West Bank and Gaza collapsed in 2014 and have shown no signs of revival. Separately on Sunday, the Israeli Navy fired on a fishing boat accused of smuggling in Hamas supplies from Egypt after its two crewmen escaped. A military spokesman said the vessel had strayed from Israel's maritime cordon on Gaza, which is ruled by Hamas. The Navy fired on the boat after it did not heed orders to stop, the military said, adding that it carried unspecified supplies for Hamas. The chairman of the Palestinian Fishermen's Union said such allegations have in the past proved baseless. The union said the two crew members had jumped into the water and swum to shore before the boat was destroyed. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Elon Musk's space launch company SpaceX has broken its own record this weekend with another rocket launch, marking 32 successful launches so far this year. The top US military official has warned that the Chinese military have become significantly more aggressive in the air and sea of the Pacific region. US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has evaluated the country's economic growth as slowing but not currently in recession, based on strong employment figures and consumer spending. A volcano on Japan's major western island of Kyushu erupted, sending black smoke billowing high into the air, but there was no immediate reports of any damage or injuries, and authorities said that they did not expect a major eruption. Thousands of Filipinos marched on the streets of Manila, demanding for the new administration to tackle issues ahead of the presidential Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s first State of the Nation address. And that's all the news from us from World News tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with a look at the world of Barbie, now open for all ages in Toronto. Stay safe and have a good night. <laughs>